in the field. And as he came and drew near the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry. He wouldn't go in. Therefore came his father out to entreat him. That doesn't sound like a religious person. I don't know who else it sounds like, amen. Hey, First of all, he was in the field working. What are you saying? You are saved by grace. We don't work for salvation. Amen? Coming to church will not make you a Christian no more than a cat having kittens in an oven making biscuits. <laughs> Amen? Hallelujah. You are saved by the grace of God. It is not your work. It was the whipping post. It was the crown of thorns. It was the nails in his hands and feet. It was him that said, it is finished and bled and died. It was him that went to hell and took the keys of death, hell and the grave, and rose again. Amen? Hallelujah. This guy's out in the field. He's working. He's working. Here he is. Coming to a place, you know. Finds him himself of, uh, of working, of approval, of self-righteousness. He asked the servant. Now get this. He hasn't talked to the elder brother yet. You see, he hasn't talked to the elder brother. He hasn't talked to his father. He's talked to a servant. And then he comes to the place where he is talking to his father. Let's do the next verse. He answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years did I serve thee. See that? Here's a good Pharisee. Here's a good righteous person or self-righteous. Neither transgressed I at any time the command, thy commandment, and yet you never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. The eyes of them both. Okay, back that up for a minute, brother. Hallelujah. You see this self-righteous Pharisee that he's talking about? Amen. I have worked all these years. I have never transgressed any of your laws. How many are familiar with the story of the rich young ruler? He comes to Jesus and he says, Good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And he said, Obey the commandments. He said, All these commandments I've obeyed from my youth. Remember what he said? Jesus turned to him and said, One thing thou lackest. Go and sell all that you have, give it to the poor, and come and follow me. And the Bible says he went away sad because he was rich. It had nothing to do with being rich. He was just bragging. He had kept all the commandments. He was a good little Pharisee. He kept everything. I haven't done anything. But you know what the first commandment says? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. His God was money. God said, get rid of your God. Come and follow me. You'll have eternal life. But he went away sorrowful. Amen? Self-righteousness, working, and trying to come to a place with God that you are working and doing. I pray, I read, I do this, I do that. If you're not doing it to allow God to work through you, then it is just being self-righteous. Amen? Amen? Adam and Eve sin in the garden. And after they sin, look at this verse. And their eye, and the eyes of them, Adam and Eve, were both open. They knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. What does that mean? Go to the next slide. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Yet, no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever, and his disciples heard it. And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter called to remember it, said unto them, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. Just leave it there. What's that got to do with it? Figs and the the, the, the first mention of figs was Adam and Eve in the Bible who were sowing fig leaves together. They were doing their work 
to sow to cover their sin. Amen? And Jesus is talking to them about how to have faith in God. And if you want to have faith in God, the first thing you're going to do is curse self-righteousness. He went to the fig tree. There was no fruit because self-righteousness, trying to cover yourself, trying to make yourself a better person, trying to look good in the eyes of God, is nothing but leaves. There's no fruit. The Bible says it's the fruit of the spirit that we are crying for. Amen? But the fig tree is a sign of the work of man. It's, it is here in the garden. They, they, they sinned. They've eaten the apple. We're naked. They, they tried to hide themselves and they sowed. And here they show up and see God. He's coming. He's going to come in the cool of the day. And when he sees me, I better have my best on. And so he comes to church, Adam and Eve. And they come to church and God says, what's that? Well, 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 well Lord, we ain't. And you know the whole blame game that they go through? But when they're thrown out of the garden because he said, don't let them touch the tree of life, amen? He made for them skins. Someone had to die to get those skins. The type of Christ had to die to cover us with that robe of righteousness. Amen? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jesus cursed the fig tree. Here we see the rich young ruler went away out of God in his life. But here we see that... Uh, uh, the the, the uh, elder son begins to get rude. Let's do what we go from here. I was surprised to me too. Keep going. Go. Go. <laughs> Hallelujah. Keep going. Here we go. But as soon back up. But as soon as they thy but as soon as this thy son, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him. So he's back disrespecting the son. I don't know if I'll use this thing again. It kind of throws you off center here. But here he is, the elder son and them are talking, and he wouldn't go in the house, and he said unto him, Thy brother has come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf. In verse 28, he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out to entreat him. In verse 29, and he answered and said unto him, Father, these many years I served thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. And as soon as this thy son, right here, has come, which devoured thy living with harlots. You know, that always surprised me. He's out in the field. He's working. He's only talked to a servant. He's never talked to his brother. He's just now seen his father. And he's saying, this, your son, who went out and he did this and got rid of all your money. And he gave, spent all his money on harlots. Who told him harlots? Who said it was harlots? You know why? Because a self-righteous person. That's what I would have done if I was dead. The Bible says in Romans chapter 2, verse 1, Thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judges. For wherein you judge someone else, you condemn yourself, because you do the same things likewise. If I had gone out and had dad's money, I would have got harmless. It was in his own heart. Amen? It was in his own heart. Hard. He said, and he's so disrespectful. He says, this, thy son, not my brother. This, your son. I've got nothing to do with that sinner. i got nothing to do with that pig-stained guy. i got nothing to do with that heathen because I'm self-righteous. I've been here working, and now I've been here not, uh, uh, go, uh, not uh, making any transgressions. Look at the next verse. I gave it. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. We don't need to work for the blessing of Jesus. We need to repent. We need to seek his face. But we don't have to work to get saved. Amen? We are saved by grace. 
Hallelujah. That, not of ourselves. The Father.